Baker. I hope I can get through this. All of the tributes have been heartfelt and from all parties. I, I first met Bill Blakey in 1987. I've been honored for 35 years to call him friend and to love him as a colleague, as a, as a fellow Christian warrior for the things that we believe in. I uh, knew Bill since 1987. Obviously, I wasn't elected then. You might, might not know that. But no, I wasn't elected until when Bill was here. Bill was, in 1987, the environment critic for the New Democratic Party. I was a, a senior policy advisor in the office of the Federal Minister of Environment, and that's how I had the amazing honor to get to know him and work together. And over the years, I can't tell the stories of adventures. I, I want to try to keep this brief. I'm going to try hard. Well, we had adventures. We marched together in the battle in Seattle, chanting, turtles and teamsters together at last. We got tear gas together. What's more binding than that? Um, that's where I first met Rebecca, by the way. Um, we also were together at the first meeting of the World Trade Organization in Singapore. And I was there at that first 1988 Robbie Burns night dinner when Speaker John Fraser, with whom Bill Blakey was a grand friend, joined together. And I, I can picture Bill to this minute marching in, piping in the haggis. And there was something about Bill Blakey's legs in a kilt that I thought, how did he get related to oak trees? But in any case, you've heard he was a, a bear of a man with a heart as big as, as he was. I want to tell you one thing about being an eyewitness to his talents, his skills as an orator in this place, his enormous warrior heart, his ability to stay focused and never give up, and of course, his talents in parliamentary alchemy. I will tell one brief story. In 1987, when the hot topic was trying to save the southern third of Haida Gwaii from clear-cut logging, and our champion, in the seat now held by the Honorable Member for Skeena, Bulkley Valley, was another dear friend we lost too soon, Jim Fulton. And we were all working, and the Minister of Environment, no less than anyone else, to save this area. And there was an Opposition Day motion, and it came forward from Jim Fulton. In those days, Opposition Day mo motions were non-votable. But we had the whole day devoted to the campaign to stop the logging and protect this area, working in concert with the Haida Nation. And at one point in the proceedings, Bill Blakey got up and said, Mr. Speaker, turning to his colleague, John Fraser, who was just as much of an eco-radical as the rest of us, and he said, Mr. Speaker, it occurs to me, words the effect, we seem to have a lot of unanimity in this place. No one had spoken against saving the area, although there were many against it. But we seem to have unanimity. I would like to move, Mr. Speaker, that by unanimous consent, at the end of today's debate, it is deemed that this motion was voted on and passed unanimously. There was a fair amount of uncertainty through the room at that moment, because no one had ever tried that before. <laughs> and uh, John Fraser, as Speaker, said, oh, well, the honorable member, the words, and, and do we have, well, the liberal environment critic was Brian Tobin. The minister was in the room, Tom McMillan. And of course, Bill and Jim and well, there was unanimity, unanimity. Yes, this will be deemed to have passed unanimously at the end of the day. Miles Richardson, then president of the Council of the Haida Nation, told the media, the great spirit hovered briefly over the House of Commons today. <laughs> those, were, those, those were things Bill Blakey could do because he was universally respected. He knew his procedure. And if Bill thought we could get away with it, well, who knew? <laughs> we did. So we've heard from many members here today about his many talents and skills and where he drew his strength. Yes, from family, yes. But his... The social gospel, something that we don't hear about very much in this place. I went to find some of the things Bill had said about that. And he, he related that when he finished theology school, he had, quote, found the prophetic tradition within the Bible, the tradition of challenging the ruling elite. And he called it this, and I, I proclaim the same, faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and Bill clarified, a Savior from the idolatries of the world. And then Bill pointed his finger at the market. The market, the be all and end all to which everything is sacrificed. 
Bill knew you cannot serve God and mammon at the same time. I once heard him on CBC Radio Tapestry being interviewed, and he said, we always hear about the Christian right. Let's hear it for the Christian left. <laughs> the social gospel is with us because Bill will always be with us. I will never, ever stop being grateful for the chance I had to be his friend, to get to know the honorable member for Elmwood Transcona and Sister Rebecca. I don't know Jessica and Tessa as well as I should but to thank Brenda, his wife, for sharing him with us all these years. It's the greatest loss, but when one cherishes a life well lived and knows that, you know, I just hope heaven was ready for Bill, but anyway, we'll <laughs> leave that for now. He is and was and will always be a prophetic voice in Canadian politics that says we don't leave behind the downtrodden, we don't forget what it is to say we have faith and we believe and miracles are possible. Eternal rest be with him, O oh Lord, and light perpetual shine upon him. May he rest in peace.